What's up, YouTube? It's a good day because our very favorite up and coming company, Atoto, has blessed us yet again by sending us one of their legitimately frigging awesome reverse cameras. So, one of the things that the manufacturers have done recently is they have kind of a bird's eye view for the reverse cam as well as your regular reverse cam. Now, this is going into my 30 year old Buick Roadmaster, which I never thought I would be able to do anything like that with it until today. So, what we're going to do is take a real quick look at it, see what comes in the box, then I'm going to go through a full professional grade installation process and follow pretty much the same procedure as I would of any customer who brings a vehicle into our shop that would need a reverse backup camera installed. Then we'll go through how to set it up. I'm already excited enough, so this is enough yapping. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. All right, so I have to admit, I'm a big fan of the packaging that Atoto provides. This is the model ACHD03LR, and this is a reverse camera. And uh, I'm actually really excited about this. Take just a quick peek at what comes in the box. Okay, so I would imagine this is most of the you dig there because it actually comes with a calibration mat. And you will find out what this is for a little bit later. That's obviously for calibrating it. So now here's where the goodies lie. We have some literature. Oh, good. It has, this is kind of the way I was wanting to mount it, was on the license plate. And uh, I'll show you why on my certain application, why I figured that would be better. And this is nice, thick, look at how thick that is. Steel, painted well. That, uh, all right. And here is the actual camera. Ha. I don't know if you can be able to hear that. It is not plastic, folks. It is 100% metal constructed. Got a little lens cover on there. And, yep, looking at the wiring, the same high quality that we've come to expect from them. Actually, really, really surprised by this. This is a very weighty uh, little cube here. It definitely feels very, very well made. I am so excited. And then this is going to be our power cable, as well as our sense cable, and as well as the video RCA, which sends the video signal. It also comes with the double-sided tape, as well as some mounting screws. If you're using the license plate bracket, like I am planning on doing, uh, really all you have to do is take a number one Phillips. I thought it was gonna be a zero Phillips, but it wasn't. And then to remove the mounting bracket from the swivel bracket, you basically just remove those two screws. And then there are two screws on the back of the Atoto. Uh, right there and you just reuse those same screws that actually hold the swivel bracket on and then they will go right onto that bracket that goes for the license plate. This whole little setup right here that I'm holding is very stout. I, I like the materials that they are using. All right so it blends pretty seamlessly from up here. As you can see it's pretty much dead centered. Now what I did was you put the bracket in between the license plate and then the le whatever, you know, license plate bracket that actually is on your car. And um, you can use the same screws like I did here. What I did first off was, this is a little piece of Velcro that, this is the soft side of the Velcro. I put that down there just so when I open this up, you know, it's going to rest on that. Now this isn't actually putting a lot of force on that, as you can see from the spring. That's about where it normally sits, so I figured it would be just fine. Now what I did was I took a couple of zip ties, and I actually went through holes that are already uh, in this bracket. And as you can see, go under the spring if you have one that folds down like this. Chances are you don't. And then now... That allows me to run my wire straight down. And the good thing about this and why I wanted to do this is because there's a giant hole already here. And this is gonna be the least intrusive. I'm not gonna to have to drill any holes anywhere and it's dead center, so this works. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and go down and prep ourselves to hook up to the reverse lamp. This may seem daunting, but this is actually a very easy step. Basically how we're gonna get this down there is if we remove this and then I think somewhere down here is a plug down there that actually sends wires through to the brake lights as well as the reverse lights. If I remember right, these you just kind of screw off and then they're cool because when they go back on you just push them on. I think I have to remove some of this trim 
And then, ha, there it is. I do know my car. Wow, that's dirty. Probably we will take this opportunity to clean this. But uh, So basically this is where our wiring harness and all that is going to shoot down. Now what may be easier is to pull this out a little bit. And then we can go ahead and get a lot more access. Uh, just go ahead and run the wire through there. And then you just kind of can scrunch that back in there. Alright, so pretty much something like that. Alright, so pretty much like that. This will pretty much follow that wire back up under the carpet. And uh, now we got to go down and try to fish this back out down there and then assess where we have to go from there. Okay, so since we're going to be working on the exterior of the car and, you know, making our connections going into the reverse light, um, you want to fight corrosion as much as you can. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually physically twist the wires, make, you know, a good mechanical joint. I'm going to solder them. Then I'm going to put on this uh, marine grade heat shrink tubing. It's got like glue in it that melts when you heat it up. We're also going to be using some of this uh, wire loom, which this actually isn't wire loom. This is tubing. Uh, wire loom, there's a slit going all the way down the length of the tubing, and it makes it easier to put on wires. This one does not have that slit, which is very weird, but we'll try to make it work. Now, I have been seeing people use these T-taps for doing this procedure, and um, or just regular butt connectors kind of hanging out in the open. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. If I was you, on the exterior of the vehicle this is the way you want to go okay so let's see oh okay found the wires and oh wow we have huh, i never noticed this but my reverse light at least on the left side of the vehicle was not working because this is this is our connector there's only one wire coming off of it i believe the black is the ground and this is actually the positive. Um, I think I'm just going to 86 that connector all together. And uh, when I'm talking about the sense wire, this is the wire that I'm talking about. This basically this pink wire hooks up to the positive lead of your reverse lamp. And the, what that does is that lets the head unit sense that you want to turn on the reverse camera pretty much. So now what I'm going to do, the other leg of this lamp obviously goes to ground. I'm just going to remove this connector and pretty much just splice in this with it and uh, run loom and stuff like that. So on these connectors, we're just going to go ahead and throw some heat shrink on. And then, like I said, we're going to zip tie them up there. So I'm going to do that and get that part ready and then uh, strip everything over there and then kind of show you what I got going on. All right, and just before I put them up there so you can get a good shot. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was going for with them. Okay, so there we go. A little bit more out of the way now to take the leap of fate and to cut that stupid connector off. Okay, so as I hope you can see, we have our reverse light on. And I have a probe down there. The way how I'm doing that without having the car running is you just keep the car turned off but you put it in reverse. I see a lot of people telling people to uh, have the car running and get somebody and put it. You, you don't have to do that. Just don't start the car. But now if I can do this, I don't know if this is going to work. But I am set to voltage. I'm going to go to a ground. Now you see there, we have voltage there. That's pretty low voltage. But, um... We have voltage here. I should check that secondary battery. That's kind of low. And uh, so basically that tells me right there that it is the green for the positive wire. So basically now what I'm going to do is make sure that this actually, this brown or the black wire goes to ground, which I'm sure it does, but okay. So basically what I did was I found the ground that actually comes and feeds this light and it ohmed out to zero ohms. So that means that there's another ground uh, pretty close that those all connect to. So pretty much what we did is just you hook your pink to, in this case, green is the positive. And then in this case, because the ground is actually grounded closer, uh, a, ch a chassis ground, your black just kind of goes to your black. This is coming from cable which is you know going to go and feed 
the camera. So basically all I'm going to do is solder these two wires, connect them just basically just like that. This comes from the circuit feeding the tail lamp. Um, two of these wires go to feed the tail lamp, the other two go to feed the camera circuit. And then, uh, so we're gonna solder those and then throw some uh, heat shrink on the end of, or on those two as well to uh, just completely keep away from the corrosion pretty much. Okay, so I had to kind of zip tie that side up over there, but there's pretty much the whole thing all hooked up. I'm going to throw some wire loom on this and secure this. Don't ever just, when you hook all this up, leave this hanging. But, uh, yep, see there's the red ones are connected coming from the circuit, feeding the other circuit, feeding the bulb, and then we have our main uh, two plugs there, onward and upward. All right, so there we go. Got that one all loomed up. Typically now we will tape at this end and then tape at that end. And I think I'm gonna tape up a lot of this as well and uh, get some zip ties up there and secure everything very well. But nice, now all we have to do after I do that is go run it through the car, which is actually quite easy. So I'm so sorry for the view down here. It's kind of hard to do, but that's everything all buttoned up, all secured. Okay. So I might at some point kind of take that loose and maybe put some tape around there. There's not really any stress on that wire, but just kind of for, I don't know, safety precautions. So here is the rest of the wire. Kind of got scared and I was like, I hope I don't have to move the sub when I started to get into this. But as you can see, that little blue and white or blue and silver wire right there is my RCA remote or my RCA and I think my remote wire for my amp runs through there too. So <laughs> easy as pie. We're just going to run it through the carpet. I really want to take all this carpet out and clean all of this. But anyways, we're just going to run it through the carpet, up under the carpet, and then run it right through there and then just run it through the trim along the side of the car that will pretty much going to follow exactly where that RCA goes. So yeah, basically through there. And then as you can see, it kind of, yep, pop, it'll pop through there and then it runs up under that trim. That's going to be actually one of the easiest parts. Then when we get up here, it's going to follow just like it does all of it. I need to vacuum my car, I'm sorry. But then uh, it's going to go up and then to the head unit. So we are almost there. All right, so here we are in the car. We have it ran all under from the back up to the front and it follows pretty much you can kind of see my uh, other wiring down there. Kind of follows the other wires I had going back there. So now we've got this up here. What I'm going to have to do is take the dash off because if you remember, uh, my Toto is actually installed into the dash. But it's just one piece that comes off. Uh, we're going to pull that off and then hook this up. And then I think we're about there. I mean, that's fine. That should work. Man, it's getting hot and I'm getting excited. So basically... We've ran that down through there where everything else goes. And basically we have our uh, RCA hooked up. I'm gonna put some tape around that. I don't think putting heat shrink around it is really necessary when it's inside the cab. Got a solder stick for our pink wire from our reverse cam, which goes to the Atoto uh, head unit. And then what I did was I took the red wire there is our ignition, which actually feeds the Atoto. That's the other one, real easy, hook red to red. Uh, that one got a bit of heat shrink and some solder. And uh, that's literally it, we're done. We're gonna stuff this all back, put our dash thing back on, and then uh, let's see what it looks like. Let's test it out and then maybe calibrate it. Well, we'll probably have to calibrate, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have to calibrate it. Okay, so got it all back together. This is the first uh, attempt at trying it and starting it out. Or, well, starting it out, this is the first attempt of trying it. Okay, so car is started. I don't have it set up or anything, but let's see what happens. Oh, nice. Okay, so now it says go into reverse which we shouldn't have to start the car. 
All right. Okay, so it's basically on the very, very right side of the screen. You tap that six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you hit the center. That brings this up. All right, so now basically we go to this top one, which says vehicle, par excuse me, vehicle parameter. And there are certain ones. I have to go to others because my car is very, very long. There I set mine for 50, 50 millimeters and then 2,000 millimeters for the width. Uh, the first one is the length. That's roughly about what my car is. Now you can just go save and exit. Now I believe we go to calibration, which is right under uh, vehicle parameters. Okay, so I guess we just test it and then it does it itself, apparently. All right, so that calibration did not work. I think because the mat is like uneven on the right side, I'm gonna have to go try to find somewhere that's level to try this. So I really cannot believe I just did this, but remember that little blue thing that was on the uh, lens for the reverse camera? Got a little lens cover on there. Yeah, somebody never took that off. <laughs> so let's see what it looks like with that off. <laughs> Yeah, that looks crystal clear. When I was kind of like, yeah, you know, that really didn't look too good. Uh, yeah, that would have been the problem. This thing is like absolutely HD, amazing. Okay, so I got it reset up. I don't know if that's gonna work. We will try though. Six on the right and then one in the middle, calibration, calibrating. success i think it probably helped that i took that little blue thing off of the lens too but uh yeah cool all right now let's go on from here uh i'm gonna have to go to the manual to see what to do next <laughs> okay so without consulting the manual forward a little bit and then let's see if oh okay yeah see how that's different on the lower left there we go See, it's drawing a little image of everything. That is flipping awesome. <laughs> and I believe it saves from where you were. That is cool, man. Totally awesome. Okay, so looking at the calibration destructions, and you can go to crop, and what that does is cuts out all the black areas. And I didn't really realize that. All right, so now that we're out of the sun, let's put it in reverse. Yeah, now we can see that's much, much better. Yeah. Oh man, that's so awesome. Man, this thing's awesome. All right, so that's it for today, guys. If you have any questions about the HD backup cam or the Atoto S8MS, go ahead and leave uh, any questions down in the comments. Actually, while you're down there, check out the description. There's gonna be links for both the Atoto S8MS and the HD reverse camera. Appreciate you guys so much for watching. And uh, be sure to like, subscribe, let me know how I'm doing, and uh, hey, we'll see you in the next one.